Welcome to chapter 13. This is the last chapter for this class. We made it, we did it. And what we wanna talk about here is Lewis diagrams or Lewis formulas or Lewis structures, just different ways to say or refer to the same thing. And we've seen something similar to this when we were talking about elements that form diatomic molecules. We've seen something called an electron dot symbol used. So it tells us about the bonding arrangements between atoms of a molecule. So we mostly saw it when we were talking about elements of, excuse me, like chlorine, okay? We saw that this, if we looked, we looked at its bonding, forms something like this, okay? Where this guy here represents two electrons that are shared, okay, this line, there's two electrons there, I'm trying to draw, that are shared between the molecule or the atoms of this chlorine molecule. And then these guys here are lone pairs around the atoms. And these atoms need enough lone pairs, electrons and bonding electrons to satisfy something we talked about called the octet rule. So covalent bonds tend to form between nonmetal atoms by filling the valence electron orbitals with the maximum number allowed. And remember that's two for S orbitals and two in each of the three P orbitals. So that gives us a total of eight or octa valence electrons. Okay, so that's where we get that octet rule. So you can have a maximum of eight electrons. And if we zoom in here, right, and if we count the electrons around uh, this particular chlorine atom, we have two there, two there, two there. So that's six. And then he's sharing two. Okay, so this is eight. Okay, that he's sharing around him. So that satisfies the octet rule. And that's something that we've seen before. And we're going to use that quite a bit when we're talking about Lewis structures in this chapter. So here's a five step procedure for draws, drawing Lewis structures or drawing Lewis diagrams, drawing Lewis formulas, all kind of the same. First step, and we're going to talk about these steps in more detail. We want to be able to count the number of valence electrons for all of the atoms involved and that are coming together to bond to form a molecule. Second, you wanna place the least electronegative atom in the center of the molecule. And so we're gonna to have to review a little bit on our trends in the periodic table to find the most electronegative atom. We're gonna draw a tentative structure, something um, that we're gonna to use to check. And then we wanna be able to compare the electrons, the valence electrons in that tentative diagram with the actual number and then modify if needed and then finally do a final sanity check to see if we have the same number of valence electrons, if the, everything has an octet, if any, everything is satisfied. We're gonna do plenty of examples in this video together about this. And also there's a whole lab that you're gonna be doing, the last lab of this semester, where you're just going to be drawing out a lot of these Lewis diagrams. So there's gonna be plenty of practice before the final exam. Okay, so the first step was calculating the number of valence electrons in the molecule or ion. So if you remember, the number of valence electrons of the main group elements is the same as its column number in the periodic table. So here's the periodic table here. And if we look, for example, we start here with hydrogen, it has one valence electron, right? It's in column number one, okay? Uh, magnesium, for example, or beryllium, they have two valence electrons, right? They're in column number two, and so on. Boron has three valence electrons, carbon has four, nitrogen is five, oxygen is six, fluorine has seven, okay? And we're not going to worry about the noble gases because remember, they don't really bond with anything. But this just gives us examples of everything in that column then. Remember, that's something we talked about with uh, the periodic table is that they have the same number of valence electrons. So this should kind of be review. You can go back and look at those videos and look at that chart too. Uh, there's a chart, I believe, um, maybe chapter six. I forgot exactly what chapter. It tells you what each, how many valence electrons each column has. So you can use that chart as well. Uh, if the species that we're looking at is an ion, the number of valence electrons must be adjusted for the charge of the ion. So for example, if it's a positive charge, we're gonna subtract an electron. And if it's a negative charged ion, we're gonna add one electron. We'll see examples of that 
uh, together. Okay, so let's go through uh, these steps some more. Okay, the second step, remember, was to determine the central atom. And the central atom is the molecule that's the least electronegative, usually. Okay, the exception though is hydrogen. Hydrogen is never the central atom in a molecule. Okay, hydrogen is never the central atom in a molecule. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is hopefully before the end of this video. And if you recall from our chapter in the periodic table, this is the trend for electronegativity. As you increase and go to the right, you become more electronegative with fluorine being the most electronegative atom. So this will help us as we decide what atom goes in the center. But remember, hydrogen never goes in the center. Okay, so I'll say it one more time. Never put hydrogen in the center of a Lewis diagram. Okay, you'll get the wrong answer every single time. Okay, so that's step two. So, so far, uh, valence electrons, which is the column number, we adjust for charges. We'll see that in a second. Look for the central atom. That's usually the one that's the least electronegative with the exception of hydrogen. Step three, this is a bunch of words. Um, this is really for you to reference and go back to and read in your notes, okay? But basically, you just draw a tentative structure, okay? You try something out. And we're gonna, as we do practice problems together, you're gonna see how we're gonna do this, but we're basically gonna identify the central atom after we have our number of valence electrons. And we're gonna connect that central atom to uh, the other atoms that we have, right? So uh, we join uh, atoms by single bonds and place electron dots around each symbol except for hydrogen, okay? so that the total of number of electrons around each atom is eight, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms always form one bond, but has no lone pairs, okay? And hydrogen is always a terminal atom in a Lewis diagram, an atom that's only bonded to one other atom, okay? Again, this is gonna be kind of clear as we do more examples. A carbon atom then here, is always surrounded by four electron pairs. Okay, that could be any flavor of electron pairs. Like we saw in our other video, it could be four single bonds. It could be a double bond and two single bonds. It could be two double bonds. It could be a triple bond, etc. right? So carbon is always a central atom in the Lewis diagram, an atom that is bonded to two or more atoms. Okay, so if you see carbon, it's gonna go in the center pretty much. And when we have several carbon atoms then that appear in the same molecule, they're often bonded to each other, okay? So we'll see some examples of that too. And uh, this last one is saying, make your diagram as balanced as possible, okay? Um, the thing that we wanna know though, is that if hydrogen is present, okay? It is usually bonded to an oxygen atom when you have oxygen in your formula, okay? And that oxygen atom is bonded to a non-metal, okay, like carbon, okay? So we're gonna see that too, but that's something to keep in mind is that when you have hydrogen and oxygen in the formula, generally one of those hydrogens is gonna be bound to an oxygen atom, at least in the problems that we're gonna be looking at in this class. It might change, or it definitely will change if you go to some higher level chemistry classes like organic chemistry. But right now, just keep that rule in mind that it's generally, um, going to be the hydrogen is bonded to the oxygen, and then oxygen is going to be bonded to a non-metal like carbon. Okay, so then once we do that, again, I'm just reading these steps, and we're going to go through them all together, and you can kind of rewind and go back as we draw Lewis structures together. We want to compare the number of valence electrons from step one to the number we used in our diagram. If they're not equal, what we're going to do is replace two lone pairs with one bonding pair. Okay, and repeat. So again, um, basically when something doesn't have an octet, when it's not happy and we ran out of valence electrons or maybe we have too many, we're, we're gonna have to adjust that and um, take those lone pairs and make them into a double bond. And again, we're gonna do examples of this. So don't worry if this seems kind of crazy. Um, we're gonna do plenty of examples. And then we're gonna just go through and check, and make sure, um, that every uh, atom other than hydrogen has four electron pairs. Hydrogen has only one electron pair. We're gonna check and make sure everything is happy. Okay, so let's do examples. 
So we want to draw the Lewis diagram for these following molecules. Okay, so the first step is determine the valence electrons. So let's do the first one here. Okay, so A. So carbon, if you look on the periodic table, okay. So let's see here, valence electrons. I'll just do VE. Carbon has four valence electrons. And again, you can get that from the number of the column that it's in, okay? And fluorine here, okay, is gonna have seven valence electrons. Again, just right off of the periodic table. And we have four of them, okay? So we're gonna add that all up. So in total, I have 32 valence electrons for this compound. So that's step one, easy, right? You just determine the number of valence electrons that you have. Okay, now we're gonna determine the central atom. So that's the one that's the least electronegative or uh, like I said before, it's usually always carbon, okay? So carbon is gonna be the central atom. And if you looked at its electronegativity compared to fluorine, which I just said a second ago is the most electronegative atom, you'll see that carbon is going to be my answer. I just dropped my microphone, <laughs> okay? So, um, Hopefully that didn't make too big of a crash on, um, on the video. Okay, I caught it though. So here we go. We have 32 valence electrons. Carbon is going to be in the center. Okay. And then the next thing, right, we're going to make our tentative structure. So I'm going to connect carbon. I shouldn't have used blue. That's a terrible color because the top of the border there is blue. I'll just stick with red. You're going to use carbon, connect it to the fluorine atoms. Okay, now um, we're not done yet. So I like to take it step by step, maybe a little bit further than um, what we just talked about before. So each one of these lines, remember, represents two electron pairs, okay, that are bonded. So that means I've used up eight valence electrons here. You see that, right? Because each one of these is two valence electrons shared together between the fluorine and the carbon. So I used up eight valence electrons. So that leaves me with 24 valence electrons left that I need to put on this structure. And remember, everything wants to have eight other than hydrogen. Everything wants to have an octet. So the fluorine right now only have, each have two uh, electrons a piece, right? That they're sharing. So I need to give each one of these fluorines six more, right? So when I do that, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit here. Okay, so this is my structure. So this is my tentative Lewis structure, right? And when I did that, I just used up all of my valence electrons, all 24 of them. So I've got zero left. So I know I use them all at least. And now I check and I say, does everything have an octet? Well, yeah, the carbon has eight electrons around it. It's happy. The fluorines have eight electrons around them. They're happy. So this is the Lewis structure. Easy, right? So like I said, you have all those rules, but really in practice, or all those steps, I should say, but in practice, it's, it's not so hard, okay? So let's do the next one. I think I can fit it over here. Okay. N H Z. Okay. So same idea. We need to figure out its valence electrons here. So nitrogen has five. Hydrogen has one times three. That has to do with its column in the periodic table. So all together I have eight valence electrons. So hydrogen is never the central atom, so this is easy. So it's going to be nitrogen here in the center, and then we connect it to each one of the hydrogens, right? So this is our next step. So we found valence electrons, uh, found the central atom, drawing our tentative diagram now. Okay, so right here, if I stop right now, I used up six of my valence electrons, so I have two left, okay? right? Because each one of those lines represents two shared pairs. And where am I going to put those two? Well, I can't put them on hydrogen because remember, hydrogen only likes to have one bonding pair or, 
or two electrons to share. But the nitrogen right now isn't happy, right? It only has six, it wants eight. So put those two there, I have none left. Nitrogen has eight, it's happy. Hydrogen has two, it's happy. That's the Lewis structure, okay? So again, it's pretty, pretty simple writing some of these Lewis structures. So I'm going to uh, just erase here uh, a little bit. So I think actually I could just clear all, erase all ink on the slide, yeah, okay. So I'll just redo this real quick. Just so we have it. Okay, so now let's do C. All right, so valence electron check. So phosphorus and bromine. So I have three of these guys. They have seven valence electrons apiece off the periodic table. Okay, and then phosphorus has five valence electrons. So I add that all up, I get 26 valence electrons for this structure. Okay, go back on the periodic table, find out which one is the least electronegative. And so we're gonna put phosphorus in the middle here and we're gonna connect it now to our bromines. So this is gonna be our tentative structure. Okay, in doing so, I used up six valence electrons. So I have 20 valence electrons left. I'm running out of room. So now we need to find octets for things, right? So um, the bromines aren't happy, all right? They each have just two electrons. They want eight. So I'm gonna give them all enough to get an octet. So they each need six more, okay? So in doing that, I just used up, um, let's see here, 18 valence electrons, I have two left. So I'm gonna put those two on the phosphorus. And I'm just erasing this because I don't like the way that blue came out, it's a little too small. So I'm gonna use red um, and put all the lone pairs back. Okay, so that is my Lewis structure for this compound. Okay, so let's do some more examples here. Now we're gonna kind of do different examples. We're gonna do ones where there are ions. So we're gonna draw the Lewis structures for these guys. So starting here, Again, first step, we're gonna find the valence electrons. So chlorine has seven, oxygen has six, but I'm gonna add one, okay? Because I have a negative charge here, all right? This is an ion. Remember when we have a negative charge, you add an electron. If it was a positive charge, you're gonna subtract an electron, okay? So that means I have 14 valence electrons here. All right, so now when I write this, there's really no central atom. There's only two atoms, right? Chlorine and oxygen. Okay, so that just used up two of my electrons. So I have 12 valence electrons left, right? And that two came from these this bonding pair. So they want an octet. Nobody has an octet right now, but if I give them each six, That just used up all of my valence electrons. And that looks like a good Lewis structure, okay? And one thing I'll say too, I didn't mention this, but because this is an ion, it's generally written like this. You put it in brackets and you put the charge up at the top, okay? So that's something that you might see, all right? So just for ions, we'll just get into practice. If it has a charge, we'll put the whole structure in brackets and put the charge on the outside of the brackets because that's how you're gonna see it um, in a lot of examples. Okay, so I'm gonna just erase this so we have room for the next one, okay? Okay, so let's do uh, B over here, just give me some more room, okay? So again, valence electrons, that's the first step. So hydrogen. We have one valence electron. Carbon, we have four. Oxygen, each one of those has six times three. 
And then we have one extra one because of the charge here. Add those all up, I get 24. Is that right? 18 plus two, 20, yep, 24 valence electrons. Okay, so you determine your central atom, it's the least electronegative, or just say it's carbon. So we're gonna put carbon there, and then we're gonna connect it to a few things, but I'm gonna pause, slow down a second, and remind us something I said. When you have hydrogen and oxygen in a compound, generally, the hydrogen is gonna be connected, at least one of the hydrogens is gonna be connected to an oxygen, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect carbon to an oxygen and then connect that oxygen to the hydrogen, okay? So I'm gonna draw it like this, okay? So this is again, um, something to keep in mind that when you have hydrogen and oxygen in a compound, that hydrogen is generally gonna be bound to an oxygen in the compound, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. Let me draw this guy just a tad bit smaller because I'm gonna run out of room when I do the last example. Okay, so carbon, oxygen, 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 hydrogen. Okay, so in doing so, in doing this, I just used up eight valence electrons, okay? So uh, what do I have left? I have, let's see here. Drawing a blank here. Uh, is that 14? No, not 14, 16. Whew, goodness. I just couldn't do uh, uh, basic math for a second. Oh goodness, okay. It's going bad for me. I gotta quit for tonight in a second, I think. So 16, goodness. All right, so I have 16 left. So I need to put them on my structure. So let's start on the outside guys. So each one of these oxygen right now has, uh, not each one, I should say, these guys here have two bonding electrons, right? So I wanna give them an octet. They wanna have eight around them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so minus 12. I have four valence electrons left, okay? And let's put them here. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm out of valence electrons. So we're done, right? Well, that's not the case. So I'm just erasing here to give myself some more room. So let's see here. So I'm out of valence electrons here, but carbon does not have an octet. Hat, right? Carbon only has six around him, okay? And that six comes from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So he needs eight. Sorry for the constant erasing that kind of happens when you're drawing Lewis structures. You should do this in pencil probably to start. So what you do here, if you remember back to our rules, when this happens, we're gonna take a lone pair from here Okay, and we're gonna bring it down and form a double bond, okay? So when we do that, this is what we get. Okay, so now everybody is happy, okay? Carbon now has eight electrons around them or four bonding pairs. Everybody else also has eight except for hydrogen. So this is our structure and we'll put them in brackets, put the charge on the outside. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Let's do one more example. So we have for C, SO3, two minus, you're gonna get plenty more um, practice problems in the lab, like I mentioned. So valence electrons. So for sulfur, I have six, oxygen, I have six times three, then I have two extra ones. So that's 26 valence electrons. Sulfur is gonna be in the middle here. Okay, connect him to the oxygen. All right. In doing so, I use six valence electrons. So I got 20 left. 
And let's put those around these oxygens. They need an octet. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that just used up 18. Two left. I put those on the sulfur. And everybody here has an octet. I put the charge on the outside. So that's a valid Lewis structure for this compound. Okay, so let's go on. Let's do a little bit different example again. All right, so hopefully it's making sense. Like I said, we're gonna get lots of practice problems. Okay. So this is it for uh, practice problems for drawing Lewis structures and Lewis diagrams, or, or Lewis diagrams, I should say. Um, so let's do these guys um, here. Okay, so A. We have this guy here, right? So we have carbon, four valence electrons times three, it's 12. Hydrogen is, oh, excuse me, is one times eight, 20 valence electrons. And remember one of our rules was, if you have multiple carbons, you usually bond them all together in a chain. So. That's what we're going to do. So, and we're going to make the molecule as symmetric as possible. Okay, so one, two, three carbons. And then each one of those carbons, right, we're going to connect to hydrogens. So, and remember, carbon can only form four bonds. Okay, four single bonds, I mean. So, this is what we're going to do here. We can form like one double bond, two single bonds, etc. but its maximum is four bonding pairs. That's what I mean to say. So when I did this, okay, that used up all my hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, used up all my carbon. And let's see if it used up all my electrons. So I have uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons used up. And if I check, all the carbons have an octet, they're happy. The hydrogens have two electrons, they're happy. So this is the lowest structure for this formula, for this compound, okay? Let's do the next one. So we have this compound here, okay? Why don't you try to do this next one actually? So I've been doing a lot of them in a row just because this is a concept we haven't seen before. But why don't you pause the video and try to do the lowest structure of this compound? Okay, so carbon, we have four uh, valence electrons times two, eight. Hydrogen, we have one times two, two. So we have 10 valence electrons. Again, we're gonna try to make this structure as symmetrical as possible. <laughs> so the carbons are gonna be bonded together. And then why don't we put the hydrogens on either side? Okay, again, making this structure as symmetrical as possible. That's one of the things that we wanna do, okay? So in doing so, I used up one, two, three, four, five, six of my valence electrons. I have four left. So what if I did this? What if I put them there? Okay, so is that acceptable? Well, the answer is no, because neither carbon has an octet. So remember what we could do then, okay, is move those lone pairs down and form multiple bonds. Okay, that, that's one of our rules. So, what if I move these guys down, form a bond there, okay? Is this now the final Lewis structure? Well, no, again, because one carbon has an octet, but the other carbon doesn't. So we got to move more lone pairs down. We'll move these guys down, form a triple bond, okay? And now, this is a valid octet, okay? The carbons each have eight electrons around them or four bonding pairs, right? So that triple bond has six electrons shared between the carbons and then the guys on the outside there. So that was a little bit of a tricky one, but hopefully that one made sense. Okay, final molecule. Uh, why don't you give that guy a try and then we'll work on it together. Okay, 
So here we go. Write this down. So I'm just going to say valence electrons for this guy. I'm running out of room, but I have it written down here, I believe, uh, is 20. Okay. So again, carbon in the center. Carbon is going to be bonded to carbon. Okay. Bonded to an oxygen. And then remember, one of those hydrogens, okay, is going to be bonded to an oxygen there. Okay. That's usually how that goes. All right, so then because carbon is our central atom, we have to connect it to the rest of the guys here. So this is hydrogens all here. Okay. That's kind of what we mean by central atom is that all these uh, other peripheral atoms, if you will, all these other hydrogens are gonna be connected to the carbon. They're not gonna be connected to the oxygen because the oxygen is not in the center of the molecule. If you could think about it that way. Okay, so how many electrons did I use up so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I got four left. And if you look here, the oxygen isn't happy. He doesn't have eight electrons around him. So I could put those electrons there. Uh, that looks like a three. I think it kind of double cap there. Don't want that. There is two. One, two, it's messing up. But anyway, that's the Lewis structure for that formula, okay? So um, one more uh, thing that I just wanna mention before we end this video is I think it's getting a little bit uh, long. Like I said, there's gonna be plenty of examples in the homework and the lab, like tons of examples. So we'll get plenty of examples going for, forward in this um, uh, section or this chapter as well. There's something called resonance structures that I just wanna point out. There are two or more equivalent Lewis diagrams that result from changing only the positions of electrons. So um, draw resonance structures. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you were to draw the Lewis structures for these guys, right? You might draw this, all right? Okay, or this, okay? And these are perfectly valid. Either way you write it, it's, they're both perfectly good and they're resonance structures of each other, meaning that that double bond and the electrons located in that double bond are moving around, or the electrons are moving around, I should say, in the structure, right? The double bonds on one side of the molecule and then the double bond is on the other side of the molecule. So they're both perfectly valid. So why don't you pause the video and then we'll go through it together a little bit more slowly and write out the um, Lewis structures and then the two resonance structures for um, that guy right there. Okay, so following our rules for Lewis structures, we need to write the valence electrons. So for nitrogen here and oxygen, nitrogen, we have five valence electrons, oxygen, we have six, and we have two of them, then we have an extra guy. So altogether, that is 18 valence electrons. Nitrogen is gonna go in the middle, put the two oxygens here. That used up one, two, three, four, for my valence electrons. So I've got 14 left. Let's do this, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that used up 12. So I've got two left, put them on the nitrogen. But notice now the nitrogen doesn't have an octet. So I need to bring these lone pairs in, okay? Make a double bond. And as you can see, that's one of the structures, but I equally could have done that on the other side, okay? So it's basically the same exact thing as above, but gave you good practice. Okay, so again, these are examples of resonance structures. So that's it for that section on Lewis structures and Lewis diagrams. And in the next video, we're gonna be talking about electron pair and molecular geometries. So. I'll see you there.